Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. Today it is technically recreating Hypixel Part 10. However, I'm kind of restarting because it's been so long since I even touched this series that the code base that I was using originally, I just don't feel confident on using anymore because it can be a lot better. Um, so we're going to do a couple things in this video. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the old code base and then I open sourced it. So if you would like to continue on from where the last code base was, um, I will go ahead and open source that. The second thing we're going to take a look at is um, what I've been doing kind of on my own in like a separate core system. This is one that I'm not planning to fully release, um, but what we're going to do with it is in episode 11, which will be coming out hopefully in a couple weeks. I said that last time, but I actually have graduated and actually have time to record now. Um, we'll go ahead and take parts of that to a new core that we're going to start um, based on 1.8 because this core I've been working on is based on 1.20. Um, so first, let's take a look at the old core. Um, it is the same thing. It pretty much only had some MySQL stuff, some loading. It used a traditional Minecraft logic of registering events in your main class, um, loading managers. Each manager did something like load a profile or uh, go for something like this. If you're interested in this, this is now open source. I'll leave the link in the description. You can take a look at everything we've done. You can go ahead and get the code here if you would like to try to run it on your own. Um, now... What I've done in the meantime, and since I started working on that, is I created a core called Core 2023. Um, and I started this in 2023 because I um, really liked creating core plugins and how they work and everything. And I showed this off a bit in the last video, and it's called a mini plugin system. Um, and what this does is it loads things in a way where it's not all referenced by the main core class, unlike a traditional plugin. So the first thing it does is it downloads all of the things you need into a folder on the server so it's not shaded in or anything. This prevents issues with um, Maven or Maven, whatever you want to call it, um, having issues between developers and stuff. So everything's downloaded and enabled on runtime. It's not um, handled throughout the shading of the core. It also loads a configure file, obviously. And then it loads a plugin manager system. And what this plugin manager system does is it has a couple things in here. It has the load plugin, unload plugin, re reload plugin, get plugin, and unload every plugin. Um, and what this does is it will go ahead and toggle this every single time you're loading something and run its on enable. So inside of our mini plugin class, you can see that it has an on enable and on disable. So every single one of the mini plugins is gonna act as its own plugin um, within like a core plugin, if that kind of makes sense. I, I keep saying plugin a lot, but that's, that's practically how this works. It goes back and forth depending on what you have set up. So, for example, under our MySQL mini plugin, which is the first one we have here, it loads everything on its own on enable in its class, connects with the local host details I have, handles its own on disable as well. So when this plugin manager is called, technically every time it's loaded, it will run that on enable. It's not going to do that. And then it also supports reloading. So it can unload a plugin and reload it while you're running the server. Um, so if you have like a chat system or something, and I haven't built any of this, you can see I've never used reload plugin yet, but in theory, you could reload specific things like the chat system or like a server manager without having to restart the server, which could be very useful if something freezes or something goes down. Um, but you can kind of get the idea of how that's kind of used. And then the way that the rest of these are used. So this, um, this core uses MySQL, it uses Redis, it uses InfluxDB, um, and then Grafana to displace things from InfluxDB. This will not be open source at this time. Um, I'm working on a, a new plugin. Obviously, in episode 11, we're going to start a new plugin that takes this aspect over to 1.8. Right now, this is coded in Java 17 1.20.4. Um, I'm going to try to port it over to 1.8 because that's what Hypixel runs on, and that's the point of this series. So I'm going to try to move all this over, and I'm going to start working that on that in the background. Um, so I can get episode 11 out pretty soon, and that plugin will be open source. Um, and then kind of how the rest of these work is you can see when you load a specific plugin, it's going to call the other plugins. So for example, the profile system needs MySQL, it needs Redis, and it needs the server manager system. So it's going to take all of those when enabling the plugin. And then it can use those things like Redis in here without making a call back to the main class. It just grabs the mini plugin from when you enable it which is quite cool because it saves a lot of time going back and forth and it makes the main class look really nice because it's really simple, really cool. 
And sometimes, obviously, you're going to have problems where things are going to enable before something else is enabled. And you can see down here, we have two examples of that, Redis and Server Manager. So let's say you go into the Server Manager mini plugin here, and there's things in here that you're not going to be able to do initially when the server starts. So for example, we try to load the Rank mini plugin, the Profile, and the Player Join mini plugin um, right when the server's going to start. But the problem with this is these aren't going to load until the Redis system and the server manager is actually started. So what we do is because the setup uh, message of the day and the check player login message use those different mini plugins like the profile and things, we actually call that loading after. So plugin manager is going to grab that um, plugin or that class name and load it once the server has finished loading the other requirements. So it's kind of... And that does get called in here. And you can call this other places if you want, but it loads those things after the initial start of the server and everything else has uh, started over time. Keeps things easy and um, it's pretty unique in terms of the way it works. Um, and then obviously you have InfluxDB here and this is where you have on disable, on enable. This is all my localhost details, so don't try to steal it. Don't worry, it's not. you can't use it. Um, you have write data. So this is where you can kind of like add things that go into the Grafana. So I have like the server name, which grabs it from server uh, manager. I have the profile manager grab stuff, all of that good stuff. And then inside of uh, server info and server manager, I use Redis. So we use the Redis mini plugin, which does two things. One, it does packets. And the second one is it does your uh, typical um, connections. So your main connection and your like uh, secondary connection. And what it's going to do with this is a few things. We grab, once again, all of the ranks, profiles, server managers, and all that good stuff. And we go ahead and store that inside of Redis under a server. So you can see here, server.test1. We save the server name, the message of the day, all of the info for the server in Redis. So we can pull this from any other server on the network of servers without um, fetching a database. It goes straightly, uh, I guess Redis is technically a database, but it... it hooks it directly there's it's stored there's it's updated once a minute you can obviously force that if you want or change the um, update interval seconds or something but you can see we go ahead and save all that info so in theory a server that we code later on in like a mini game can grab a lobby's info see if it's full see if pvp is enabled see what the weather cycle is and we can change that depending on things and we also have a server info command and i'll show you this in game is when you log into the server you can type slash server info get and space the server name and if you are ranked correctly which i'm not because i was setting this up earlier so if i go ahead and set my rank uh, you can also see that redis will go ahead and set the rank and um it will set it in mysql as well so you can see updated rank in mysql and then it also sent a redis packet um to set up that rank in redis which is pretty cool um but now i can run that command and you can see it pulls the message of the day when it was updated, the weather cycle, the IP, and it also tells you when it was fetched and the next update info. So you can kind of have all of this built around a cool, unique system um, built off Redis. And then obviously the profile as well is saved in here. So you have your account ID, your money, your coins, your level, your rank, experience, and UUID in Redis. But you also have that over in MySQL. And MySQL won't save until the player disconnects from the server, but Redis will update every single time you do something. So for examples, if you do coins add my username one, it's gonna go ahead and update that coin. So I've now had extra coins. And if I disconnect, it's gonna go ahead and save that profile inside of Redis, there it is. And then when I rejoin, rather than pulling from MySQL, it's gonna go ahead and pull from Redis because it sees my profile preloaded in there and I'm not gonna have a problem pulling from MySQL a second time. And if I go back into MySQL and refresh, you can see it has updated and saved, but I'm pulling from the uh, Redis, not from MySQL. I save the um, advancement. And this is good for load balancing and future usage. It is not needed for something this advanced this early, but I wanted to build out something that has a cool little system. And you can kind of see if I go into the rank mini plugin stuff uh, or the set rank command, you can see kind of how complicated this gets because you have to do so many different things. You have to check... If you're in Redis, you have to update where you are in MySQL. You have to update and notify the player. You have to handle any invalid ranks. So I'll kind of let you guys look through this on the screen. There's not much um, that happens. We use player packets as well for Redis. So you have staff and player. So you can do global staff alerts. Um, 
And that's what we did here in game when I did coins add global staff alert coins a player has been updated to this by my username. That's actually being sent um, by the packet. So that's the message all staff packet. And in my coins command, for example, um, when we send that packet, you can see we message all staff update message using these aspects. So the update message is the coins have been updated. So every server in the whole network, and right now I only have one server, obviously, would receive this notification to all online staff. You can do the same with players as well, where you do the message all players command. And this is kind of used for things that you would have like updating boosters or updating game uh, settings. That would be used as packets in Redis rather than something like MySQL or Bungie's messaging channel. Kind of complicated, but I promise this is kind of an advanced way to do it, and it really works really well if you think about it. You also have the same kind of accounts system that we had previously. You can see we have like um, the player profile and everything. We still do the same thing we did in the last core. We just do it in a little bit of a different way. We only save from MySQL when needed. We don't retrieve anything outside of that. And then inside of our player manager, you can see we load profiles from the Redis system, or we load it from MySQL if needed, or we can load it as a directly from the server if it's been pre-saved on the server. Um, and obviously you would advance this past this step if you had a um, bungee cord aspect, which we, we could get into in future episodes, where like if the player disconnects, let's say rather than saving the profile in uh, MySQL and Redis every time they disconnect, you could actually save it in Redis only if they're switching servers to a different server on your network at the same time. Or if they were disconnecting from the proxy server, you could save the data to MySQL, which saves even more um, bandwidth and uh, just the constant connection to your database, um, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, you can obviously do different things in here. You can use advanced in each, uh, each separate setting. You could block um, different commands. So this is kind of just like a unique overview of um, what you can do with a system like this. Um, we've been kind of, I've been, me and a couple other developers I work with have been messing with like Nix and disguising. Um, we've messed with like a give plugin. So you can use Slack give with like custom enchants or different items. So I could do like Slack give my name diamond sword um obviously spell diamond right um i clearly can't spell today diamond sword like give diamond sword maybe i don't remember yeah it's that so that's a different format so obviously there's still things we need to fix and then like you can add sharpness sharpness one i i, I don't know the actual string of doing this so it's item name amount enchantment and then all so slash give diamond sword sharp or one sharpness one all there you go that's how you're supposed to do it. and then it gives a sharpness one so obviously there's a lot you can update and a lot you can fix around here um, but I kind of wanted to just show off, this is kind of the idea I'm going to get in moving in episode number 11 when it comes out. But for the meantime, you can check out the old core, all the old um, code and everything that we did here. Because I know some people have been asking for it. And in the next episode, we'll go ahead and start working on using a mini plugin system. I'm going to figure out how I can port this over to 1.8, given this is a 1.20 plugin. Um, but if you're interested in something like this... Um, stay tuned because more of that is coming soon and I really like using more advanced systems now that I finally have time to explore them and figure out how they work and th this has taken almost a year to kind of get to the point where I really understand how it works and I've designed it in a way that it can continue to grow without running into the same roadblocks we had with this existing core where while it did work you're going to run into roadblocks going forward. It's not something that would actually be used on a production server. It was just kind of an example. So I'll keep you updated on future videos with all this, but I wanted to just get back into this, let you know more episodes are coming. And thank you so much for sitting tight because I know it's been a long wait. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you next time. Well, I'm all for Christmas. All the happy smiles and the wishes 
And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe.